So we have a last speaker, Wish. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, myself, Vishwasa Sadhuki. Uh, today I'll be presenting about the Smart on Fire demo application, which involves basic steps um, during the Smart on Fire flow within the EHR launch. There are two kind of plans launch, but I'll mostly talk about the EHR launch. So the agenda, yeah, we'll talk about on high level what are the steps involved into Smart App launch, then the EHR. I'll little bit talk about Logica Sandbox because I'm, I'll be using that for demoing purpose. Uh, then the actual demo and then some of the references. So on high level, these are the six steps involved into Smart App launch. First one is you have to register your application within the EHR, either through EHR provided portal or through the endpoint. And this is just one-time activity, right? Where you go and provide your uh, launch URL, redirect URL, and define your scope, what uh, scopes your app will be using, right? And at the end, you will get the client ID and maybe a client secret as well in terms of the secret uh, symmetric uh, registration. Then once that is step is completed and EHR uh, practitioner launches the application within EHR, that is second step, which is EHR launch, where you get the request into your application when the app map is launched within the EHR. The next step is we get the metadata of that uh, fire server, either through metadata endpoint or well-known configuration to look out for the authorization endpoint and the token endpoint. Right? And then you get the authorization code by calling that authorization token endpoint and then uh, providing your client ID, scope and other details. Once you get the authorization code, you use that authorization code to get the access token. And the access token will be used to actually fetch the uh, clinical data or fire API from the fire server. So this diagram depicts um, the flow basically. Um, I'll not go into details of each of those uh, things, um, but on high level, when you launch the application, it gets the URL and along with that, you get some of the other parameters like issuer, which is the fire endpoint and the launch, which is your one opaque identifier. Then you actually send the request to the authorization server to get the authorization code with launch and other parameters like your client ID, scope, redirect URL and stuff like that. Uh, and then you will be presented or practitioner will be presented with the consent screen, right? And then it will be having all the details like where the application will be redirected. Once you approve what scope that application is uh, requesting. Once the uh, we click on the approve button, we get the authorization code. And with authorization code, you go to again um, uh, to get the access token. And once you receive the ac access token, you can actually request for the clinical data. Uh, which is needed for your app, uh, your application. And that completes the flow for EHR app launch. As I'll be using the Logica Sandbox, uh, Logica Sandbox is a uh, freely hosted and open source sandbox used mostly for testing purpose. This provides a lot of uh, uh, features and functionalities when it comes to developing and testing smart on our applications. Like for example, some dummy patient data generated with you using Cynthia, the place where you can register your applications and you have different uh, roles, personas you can create there. It provides the EHR simulator, which simulates the basically EHR um, uh, flow where you can actually see your app being launched within the iframe and how it will look like. You can provide EHR provided uh, sandboxes, but most of the time you do not have control over there. You have to deal with whatever that the patient data or dummy data they, they have created for your testing purpose. So Logica Sandbox comes in handy when you want to create multiple set of or scenarios of your clinical data for testing purpose. And I'll show you actually when you, you go for the uh, demo, uh, different aspects of it. This is what like my patients look like into Logica Sandbox. 
going to actually demo let me go ahead and launch the application start the application so this is just a sample application i have created it has a uh, two parts of it one is a front end being developed using Vue.js and Vue.ty framework and backend using Nest.js and TypeScript. For simplification, I just kept the registration into JSON file here and using it. But for real life scenario, you will be actually storing those uh, details into somewhere in the database in a secure place. You don't need to worry about the client ID and client secret for now because in, even though they are showing it here, I'll be deleting after the, the demo. So for uh, our use case, I created a two sample applications, right? SAF demo app one and SAF demo app two. And the registration, like who is the, the issuer for that um, application? What is the client ID and client secret? Once we uh, register application with the EHR, what scope this application will be using? What is the launch URL and what is the redirect URL for that application? And just for variation, what clinical data that application is needing, right? So your one application might require a different set of uh, clinical resources versus other applications might uh, need different. For for this application, let's say I, I'm just looking for uh, patient resource and condition resource. And for, let's say, another application, I'm looking for patient and observation resources. Right? Now, let me go back here and show the Logica Sandbox. So this is actually um, Logica Sandbox where I created a one R4 Sandbox and registered two applications here, which you just showed into the code. Once you go to the settings, you can see the client ID, client secret, what is the launch URL and your callback URL and the scope for that application. Now, when the application is launched, you get this endpoint hit with along with the issuer and launch. So I'm just into app while there's registering application, I'm differentiating uh, application world one versus application two by configuring this launch URL in a specific way. For this application, it will be SAF demo app one. But if application two is launched, it will actually uh, pass it to um, SAF demo app two so that I can grab that uh, path parameter and then uh, look for the specific app registration into my side. Um, you can see different patients created um, into the sandbox. Um, these are realistic patients, not real. I uh, created using Cynthia. Different personas like practitioners and all those. Uh, this one is a very handy place. Launch scenarios where you can actually configure your applications along with specific practitioner, specific patient, and different launch parameter or launch context parameter you can use. Here I have configured, I will launch the CSF demo app one uh, using Susan Clark as a persona or a practitioner and it should launch a Daniel Johnson as a patient and it should pass some encounter uh, resource as part of the launch context. Mm -hmm. So I can launch the application using here as well as I can use the EHS simulator as well. Let me launch the application uh, one from here and then I'll show the another application from EHR simulator. So uh, as you can see the advanced application is launched successfully. These are the uh, steps happen and at each step you can see when an application is launched it auth in it you get that application name right and the issuer which is nothing but fire endpoint and the launch parameter which is one opaque identifier. Next step, we actually get the well-known configuration for that fire endpoint, which involves different like metadata about the fire server, like authorization endpoint, token endpoint, and scopes. You take this authorization endpoint and pass your client ID, client secret scopes to get the authorization code. Once Authorization, you, in this step, you receive the authorization code along with the state parameter uh, you passed. You use the authorization code to get the access token and as a response to access token, you have the response, you get the access token here, which you use for getting the clinical data. Along with that, you get launch context 
parameters like scope, what patient uh, this application is launched with, and what encounter that application is launched with, as well as the ID token as well. Then you use this access token to query the fire server and get the clinical data. So if you see uh, for this application, I have you I need patient resource and along with that it's condition resource so I received that um, from the fire server using that access token for second application I might learn using the EHR simulator where let's say now here we can see the it's simulating the EHR workflow where you can see the patient demographic here and practitioner details and in demo applications, the workflow goes same, but at this time, I'm actually launch, a lot application is being launched within the EHR in iframe, and all the data flow happens in the same way. But um, in this case, while getting the patient data, I'm getting patients as well as it's all observation resources. I mean, we got to presentation. The references I, I use are the smart on uh, for app launch one. Then the GitHub repository for this code where I put the code uh, for the front end and back end, logic sandbox and launch context detail. Basically, I want to take just take this as a use case and show what steps happen in the back end when we actually launch the application using using EHR workflow. Thank you. Yeah. That's it for me. Yeah. The question: uh, How long uh, are you working on Smart on Fire application, and uh, how much it to take the time to get familiar and feel confident that you can write smart on fire i mean it's like getting started with the smart on fire i think there are quite a good number of resources and uh we can get started within a, a yeah, few I mean, weeks or how months. much uh, uh did you spend on this to yeah i'm currently like working upon a couple of years for on smart on fire my experience with that is uh getting started is quite easy uh like pre pretty straightforward but when it comes to integrating with ehr like brandon mentioned about different ehr vendors or different fire server has different implementation right when you work with epic versus cerner with other vendor right um there you going to much up the complexity because the ehr vendor one has implemented in one way so you might your application might work with them in a pretty straightforward way but when it go to other vendor to integrate in there so they are having different way of implementing those steps that's where you actually go into much complexing and then you need to basically uh, have customization or configuration based on the hr vendor based on the fire version uh, and differentiation uh, based on that okay thank you Vish. guys any questions to wish yeah, I have a question to Vish. It might be a question to the, on to the floor, actually. Um, I did a little research on SSO. Um, in terms of the Smart Fire launch, when you when you hit the authorization server with authorization endpoint and you pass in scope equals launch, you can pass in you know a bunch of scopes: user read, patient read, whatever. Right? If you pass in launch, that should tell the app if you're doing a EHR launch or EMR launch that. You're launching from the EMR context to enable single sign-on, so you don't have to log in again. Is that is that sense correct? Because that's what we have for one documentation for one EHR, but another EHR does not have that specific thing. So back to what um, Nobrello was saying about the entropy of, of differences and and uh, of different implementations and IGs. It, is it the standard that scope equals launch supposed to enable single sign-on from a Smart enough fire launch inside a EHR versus standalone. If anyone has that answer, I'd really appreciate it. Sure, that's I mean, Josh. I can I can weigh in on this briefly. Um, the way the specification is written, 
if you're doing an EHR launch, your app is going to be opened by the EHR in the first place, and it will receive a launch parameter. Right. And then it takes that launch parameter and it passes it along to the authorized endpoint. Um, so that launch parameter gets passed verbatim. You receive something called launch, and then you send something called launch. I'm talking about the need it. launch, not, not the launch. Right. So, that's, right. so that's a URL or query parameter called launch. And then in addition, if you need context that the EHR might not otherwise provide, you can include a scope of, for example, launch and patient, if you need patient context. That's a hint to the EHR, but the EHR could ignore that hint if it wants to. It's launching your app in context. It's going to give you the context it has. Uh, the imperative thing is that you include the launch equals query parameter uh, as you redirect to the authorized endpoint. Yeah, that, that's whatever you get originally in the launch endpoint. You pass it in into the authorized endpoint. The same launch query param value has to match. Yeah, that I get. I was just wondering about scope equals launch, but I think you answered my question. So you're saying they can't ignore that context. Of yeah, I'll include a deep link to the definitions in the spec. I'll put it in the chat here. Great. Thank you, Josh. Sure thing. Okay, thank you, Vish.